Phil with Kansas, what was that experience like to finally show the film with a crowd? Well, it's a, it's always a unique experience to see it on a big screen and watch people's reactions. I mean, it's a, it's like playing in front of an audience. You know, it's great to have people react to what you've created, and, uh, and people seem to get it. They get the story that we have yeah. told, and uh, it's uh, very appreciated. Very appreciated. So now, going into the project, what was your greatest hope for it? What type of message, what kind of feeling did you want to get across? Well, I really just wanted to, I think, tell the story. I don't think we had uh, any, you know, any uh, higher expectation of just being able to tell the story. We really appreciate Sony's involvement in, in, in funding this and allowing us to, to do it and their belief in the story itself. That was not an easy thing and just to tell the story. And they, they came on early and uh, from the outset. So it was great they did that. And so in telling the story, I think it's something that uh, we just hope that uh, people, people come and see it. And it's an uplifting story. It's a positive story. And I think a lot of people can relate to having a dream and actually struggling hard to get to that dream and that people can actually can actually make it to their dreams, to their expectations. And, you know, it may be a little lofty, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, nothing these, wrong with being lofty. Sure. Right? I mean, these days it's hard to imagine what we did before the internet. More or less, you guys are in the middle of Kansas, not yeah. knowing anyone in the industry. Right. I mean, the thought of that today, without any modern technology, yeah. is mind-boggling. You know, when you look back at that, do you just think? of the odds that you guys were against? It, 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 actually, this band shouldn't have happened. I mean, when you watch the film and look at the story and all the things that lined up the way they did, that's why we called it Miracles Out of Nowhere, because it, it really shouldn't have happened. It was a very long shot. So we're very fortunate. Yeah, and obviously these days, the record companies that still exist would never give a band a, a second or a third album. No, no, it, it, no. No, we were very fortunate to have someone like Don Kirshner who believed in us and kept investing in us and allowing us, you know, to grow as a band. And that was, uh, we were very fortunate and very lucky. Yeah, so what you had to give up publishing-wise, obviously it was a, oh, a yeah. shot that yeah. never no, would have happened. No, I mean, it's part was, of the business. That was discussed shortly in the film just because it was, uh, uh, that's how we got the shot. That's, that was the only opportunity we had. So even though we gave up something, what we gained far out distant, distanced what we you know could have gotten publishing wise. You know, yeah. you can hold on to the publishing <laughs> and it could be worth nothing, or you can give it up and have a career. So. Having a smaller piece of something big is yeah. much bigger. So now, I, yeah. obviously, the, that time period of left overture and point of no return is the the epic, mm -hmm. the you know, yeah. the the top of the mountain. What was your feelings like looking back at that or during that period? that everything was clicking and the songs were coming. What was your greatest memory of that? Well, it's, it was interesting because a lot of us, most of us hadn't revisited that time period in our minds for a long time. We just kind of went through it and we just kept going with our career. So I think it was interesting for all six of us to revisit that and look at it and hear each guy talk about what it meant to them. And I think we learned a lot about each other just doing this documentary because at the time we didn't talk about, well, Gee, we just had a big single. What do you think? I mean, we didn't we didn't have time. We were too busy working. Yeah. So, so and when you think of all the years of, of the shows, and I know you guys played with the best of them, mm -hmm. the Aerosmiths and the Nugents and the Ario Speedwagons and the Cheap yeah. Tricks, and such a great time for music. You know, yeah. when we look back on the decades, no question, the '70s were my favorite decade. Mm -hmm. But what were your greatest memories about the camaraderie with the bands and the the festivals? It was such a more primitive business back then. There's, uh, I think, if all six of us were here, we'd you know tell you the camaraderie is much closer now uh, that we've gotten away from that because mm -hmm. the being in that kind of famosity, being in that kind of you know uh, circus is you don't really have much time to hang with each other because mm -hmm. you're just so caught up in what you're doing. But now that's all over with, even though the band is still playing and still works all the time. Uh, we're we're much closer friends, and uh, you know we have kids and actually yeah. have lives versus traveling around the world. It's something that uh, we're we're closer now than we were then.
there's kind of a exclusive club, oh, yeah. the, the Rat Pack. Yeah. You guys can all reminisce yeah. of, of those times. Yeah. Was there a show or a moment or, or something that was just continues to stand out playing live where you just couldn't believe what it would be the crowd or the setting or something? Well, I think, you know, highlight. playing with the Rolling Stones, you know, from 90,000 people to I was at that show in Folsom Stadium oh, okay. in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, okay. That was a big <laughs> You one. reminded me of that. That yeah. was, I, I was the front row, as a matter of fact. Oh, wow, that'd be Lo nice. Loving music so much, yeah. I made sure I got there early, and it was, of course, festival seating sure. at the time, yeah. which you never have anymore. Yeah. And I was at the the tip of the lip, okay. <laughs> the, or the tongue, the tongue, yeah. the tongue that came out. Yeah, those and, those uh, shows are, are memorable, and of yeah. course the shows that we first started headlining ourselves and things. You know, a lot of exciting times. I think it's uh, a lot of it we've revisited in this film, and it's kind of cool to see it ourselves. You know? Yeah, and the business obviously changed completely. It's unrecognizable to when you guys were around, but. What advice do you give to the young players, the guys that are just starting to write their own songs, play their own shows? Have fun, you know, have fun doing it because if there's a chance that you don't make it, in, in your mind, when, you know, whatever making it is to you, yeah. if you don't get there, at least have fun trying, you know, have, have fun, have a good time. I mean, you know, don't party your brains out, I'm not saying that, but, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, have, you have fun being in a band and playing music and it's it's a privilege to be able to do that and uh, yeah I mean it, that's kind of why we started playing in bands was to have fun and we just happened to be successful you know so it's a good you know we didn't really start out to be famous we just, yeah let's play in a band because it's fun and you get to meet girls <laughs> so we thought that was pretty cool well congratulations again it's amazing to see it on the silver screen can't wait to Share it with the world. Documentaries well, are one of my favorite forms of well, thanks, entertainment. And well, thank you. Best of luck in your future endeavors. Thanks. Appreciate it.